Hey, how's it going, you fiends? I'm Demi Bobemi. And this is Freya. Hey, Freya. And I'm dead inside. And that's Isaac. Hey, Isaac. And welcome back to another episode of Peter Pan. The story of the most wonderful boy. Freya, do you want to read? Isaac, do you want to read? They're illiterate. (laughs) (laughs) You guys don't even know your numbers. Isaac, breathe into the microphone. Oh, he's shy. <laughs> oh, he's camera shy. Freya's not. She's like, put the microphone up to my mouth. I'll tell him a thing or two. <laughs> I don't know why. In our mind, Freya has like a very soft, like southern <laughs> accent. Yeah, she's not even American. She's Japanese. Okay, Isaac, I have to read, which means I have to cross my legs, which means you can't lay on my lap. Sorry, this is the name of the game. Mommy and Daddy have to work now. That doesn't mean come over here. (laughs) (laughs) Ready for a recap? (laughs) Sure! Demi's recap, yeah, yeah, yeah. My little recap, my little recap, my little recap. Okay, ready? I was born ready. What the fuck happened last time? Oh, fuck. Yeah, I know what's going on. Don't worry. No, I gave it to you telepathic. I told you. I told it. I told it to you telepathically. Okay, that's where that came from. Last time, Hook shimmied down the hole. <laughs> but then he got kind of stuck because he couldn't reach the little latch to open up the door. But then uh, Peter's medicine was there. And he said, I have a good idea. So he went boop, boop, boop with real bad um poison in the medicine. And then Peter woke up and said, I'm... uh." Ah, I'm panicking! Stop! Oh my god! Uh, Tinkerbell, Tinkerbell said, "Peter, you have to save the everybody." And he said, "Okay, I should go save them. Let me go take this medicine." She said, "No, I'll drink the medicine, but it was really poison." God damn it! I hate that. I hate it so much. <laughs> Did that really happen? The last episode we saved Tink. Yeah, we do believe in fairies. We do. We do. Remember? Was it? I guess so, it was, wasn't it? Yep, 100%. Good recap. Uh, Tink survived. Yeah, don't worry. Peter Pan was like, I'm going to go on a life-saving adventure. Um, also, in the last episode, we had brought up that um, like, we liked that Peter Pan was... Not being shitty and being like, oh, they tried to leave me. Yeah. But in the recording room on Discord, which is accessible to specific tiers from our Patreon uh, dot patreon.com slash dead inside, Immortal brought up that maybe it was just as simple as he forgot <laughs> that, that they tried to leave him. <laughs> <laughs> he just completely forgot about the betrayal, so... <laughs> I guess that's more likely than him being gallant or honorable. <laughs> gallant is a good word, yeah. No, oh, I don't want to like put my feet up now. Because Freya is. <laughs> I don't want to cross my legs because she's like laying on my foot. She's like munched up to your feet. She likes the smell of them. <laughs> <laughs> they smell like popcorn. <laughs> Mine don't smell like. Oh, I see what you're. Okay. Buttered popcorn. <laughs> that's what my feet smell like buttered popcorn because <clears throat> when uh after i make a bag of popcorn i usually <laughs> put my feet into the bags of popcorn to moisturize them Just, like sloop them around in there oh my god have you seen the video of that one girl that goes up to the butter pump she's like an old lady and she goes up to the butter pump at a movie theater and puts it in her hands and then wipes her face with it. <gasps> yes. What is wrong with people? Methamphetamine. You think so? Yeah. Like, Meth makes you want to butter your face? Dude, someone's got to be gacked out to be rubbing movie theater <laughs> popcorn <laughs> like butter on their face. It's like the only explanation. Gacked out. Maybe it's not meth. Maybe it's something else. Maybe like edibles or something. She's like, I just want to put butter on my face. I don't know. I've never fucking done edibles, so I don't know what it does to you. Maybe it just really makes you want to put butter on your face. I just hear people get fucking, like... Weird. Yeah, way out of it. So I would just imagine that 
you know, if you're like way fucking out of it because you ate too many edibles, then you would like maybe want to put butter on your face. Maybe you felt like butter and you're like, I'm going to be one with the butter. I've also heard that when people do ecstasy, they really get into like textures. So maybe she was like. Butter has a good texture. I don't know. I think I think I could understand if you were like at a really weird heightened level of like into textures. I would say popcorn butter is probably at the top of that list. <laughs> Ew. Like who goes to a movie theater like on ecstasy? I could I could maybe understand like an edible, like going to a movie theater stoned or something, but like on ecstasy. Maybe they just ended up there. Like I don't know. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Chapter fourteen. The pirate ship. I'm excited. I love pirates. One green light squinting over Kid's Creek, which is near the mouth of the Pirate River, marked where the brig, the Jolly Roger, lay low in the water. A rakish-looking craft foul to the hole, every beam in her detestable, like ground strewn with mangled feathers. She was the cannibal of the seas, and scarce needed that watchful eye, oh. for she floated immune in the horror of her name. Cannibal of the seas would be such a good ship name. Oh, in shit. Thought. Like, I don't know if that's the right length, but that'd be sick. C-A-N-N-I-B-A-L O-F-T-H-E-S-E-A-S. No, I think you have like four more characters you could go for. I guess my ship name is the Damned Siren, so yeah. you could probably fit a lot on there. I just think that'd be a cool ship name. She was wrapped in the blanket of night, through which no sound from her could have reached the shore. There was little sound, and none agreeable save the whir of the ship's sewing machine at which Smee sat, ever industrious and obliging, the essence of the commonplace, pathetic Smee. <laughs> I was like, hell yeah, sewing on a ship, my man. And then... You're like, this sounds nice, pathetic. <laughs> Rude. Mediocre. <laughs> I know not why he was so infinitely pathetic, unless it were because he was so pathetically unaware of it. But even strong men had to turn hastily from looking at him. And more than once, on summer evenings, he had touched the fount of Hook's tears and made it flow. Of this, as of almost everything else, Smee was quite unconscious. I know a couple people that are pathetic, and so pathetically so, because they are unpathetically unaware. Are they, would you describe them as quite unconscious? Sometimes they literally are. <laughs> a few of the pirates leant over the bulwarks, drinking in the miasma of the night. Others, <laughs> yeah, miasma, isn't like miasma like fart? <laughs> it's not like necessarily a fart. It's just like I think it's a smell that like surrounds something. Oh, okay. I thought it was like sickeningly. I think it's like a I think it's typically a bad smell. Yeah. Um I was watching Inuyasha and they described something as a <laughs> as a miasma. <laughs> yeah. So and it was like definitely a stank. I think I just always relate miasma to farts because it's like my asthma. <laughs> You know? Yeah. And if you're like farting enough out of your ass, you are creating a miasma. I suppose you sorts. would be. Others sprawled by barrels over games of dice and cards, and the exhausted four who had carried the little house lay prone on the deck, where even in their sleep they rolled skillfully to their side, or that out of Hook's reach, lest he should claw them mechanically in passing. So he just has a habit of like walking by people and being like, Kyah! Um, maybe if they're in his way. Or maybe just to cause terror amongst his crew as he's walking by. You're just there doing your job. And he goes. That's like kind of fucked up. And you go. Oh! That ain't right, man. Hook tread on the deck and thought. 
Oh, man, unfathomable. It was his hour of triumph. Peter had been removed forever from his path, and all the other boys were in the brig about to walk the plank. It was his grimmest deed since the days when he had brought barbecue to heel, and knowing as we do how vain a tabernacle is man, could we be surprised? Had he now paced the deck unsteadily, bellied out by the winds of his success? What is tabernacle? I just only know the tabernacle choir. Here's the definition of tabernacle. In biblical use, a fixed or movable habitation, typically of light construction. And knowing as we do how vain a tabernacle is man. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. I'm going to need you to explain that to me. Like, you know how people, I guess how I'm interpreting it is, you know, when people talk about like the ego being like fragile, uh, if it's like a house of light construction, oh, you could say that it would be fragile. I gotcha. But there was no elation in his gait, which kept pace with the action of his somber mind. Hook was profoundly dejected. He was often thus when communing with himself on board ship in the quietude of the night. It was because he was so terribly alone. This inscrutable man never felt more alone than when surrounded by his dogs. They were socially inferior to him. Hook was not his true name. To reveal... What are you smiling about over there? Nothing. Hook's just a really relatable character. <laughs> <laughs> you going into work? Like, all these... Looking around, they're like, what's wrong, Demi? You look sad. And you're like, you all are just beneath me. <laughs> <laughs> Hook was not his true name. To reveal who he really was would even, at this date, set the country in a blaze. But as those who had read between the lines must already have guessed, he had been at a famous public school, and its traditions still clung to him like garments, with which, indeed, they are largely concerned. Thus it was offensive to him even now to board a ship in the same dress in which he grappled her, and he still adhered in his walk to the school's distinguished slouch. But above all, he retained the passion for good form. Good form, however much he may have de degenerated, he still knew that this is all that really matters. Speaking to your heart still? Um... Nah, <laughs> I don't give a fuck about good form. <laughs> I mean, I guess like in a way sort of, but it's not as like, it doesn't resonate the way that just thinking that you're above everyone else does. <laughs> kind of an asshole, I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> <laughs> from far within him, he heard a creaking as of rusty portals, and through them came a stern tap, tap like hammering in the night when one cannot sleep. Have you been good form today? Was their eternal question. Fame, fame, that glittering bauble. It is mine, he cried. Is it quite good form to be distinguished at anything? The tap-tap from his school replied. I am the only man whom Barbecue feared, he urged, and Flint feared Barbecue. Barbecue? Flint? What house? came the cutting retort. Most disquieting reflection of all. Was it not bad form to think about good form? His vitals were tortured by this problem. It was a claw within him sharper than the iron one, and as it tore him, the perspiration dripped down his tallow countenance and streaked his doublet. Oft times he drew his sleeve across his face but there was no damning that trickle. Ah, envy not, Hook. He's super sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> that, I think, yeah, that's exactly what they're getting at here. Hell yeah, dude. <clears throat> He's just a sweaty boy. Sweaty. Now that I can relate to. <laughs> there came to him a presentiment. Presentiment? Sure, I don't know. Presentment is used as a noun to me. 
A formal presentation of information to a court, especially by a sworn jury regarding an offense or other matter. Presentiment? Is that different than presentment? Have we just shortened that word? I've never heard anyone say presentment. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. <laughs> so, the answer is no. <laughs> That won't make final cut. <laughs> there came to him a presentiment of his early dissolution. It was as if Peter's terrible oath had boarded the ship. Hook felt a gloomy desire to make his dying speech, lest presently there should be no time for it. Better for Hook, he cried. If he had had less ambition, it was in his darkest hours only that he referred to himself in the third person, <laughs> as it should be for all. If you ever are referring to yourself in the third person, it should be in your darkest of hours. Yeah, I think you kind of have a pass in your darkest of hours. No little children to love me. Strange that he should think of this, which had never troubled him before. Perhaps a sewing machine brought it to his mind. For long he muttered to himself, staring at Smee, who was hemming placidly under the conviction that all children feared him. Feared him! Feared Smee! There was not a child on board that brig that night who did not already love him. He had said horrid things to them and hit them with the palm of his hand because he could not hit with his fist. But they had only clung to him the more. Michael had tried on his spectacles to tell poor Smee that they thought him lovable. Hook itched to do it, but it seemed too brutal. Instead, he revolved Instead, he revolved this mystery in his mind. Why do they find Smee lovable? He pursued the problem, like the sleuth hound that he was. If Smee was lovable, what was that what was it that made him so? A terrible answer. A terrible answer suddenly presented itself. Good form? Had the bosun good form without knowing it, which is the best form of all? He remembered that you have to prove you don't know you have it before you are eligible for pop. With a cry of rage, he raised his iron hand over Smee's head, but he did not tear. What arrested him was his reflection. To claw a man because he is good form... What would that be? Bad form. <laughs> it's a certainly not good form. Yeah. The unhappy hook was as impotent as he was damp, and he fell forward like a cut flower. His dogs, thinking him out of the way for a time, discipline instantly relaxed, and they broke into a bacchanalian dance, which brought him to his feet at once. All traces of human weakness gone, as if a bucket of water had passed over him. Oh, I thought, I thought it was bringing him back like he was going to start dancing. That's what I was thinking. I was hoping that he's just like, got the, the dancing in him, you know but what I mean? no, he goes, quiet you scugs, he cried, or I'll cast anchor in you. And at once the din was hushed. Are all the children chained so they cannot fly away? Aye, aye, then hoist them up. The wretched prisoners were dragged from the hold, all except Windy, and ranged in line in front of him. For a time he seemed unconscious of their presence. He lolled at his ease, humming, not, unmelo not unmelodiously, snatches of a rude song, and fingering a pack of cards. Ever and anon the light from his cigar gave a touch of color to his face. Now then, bullies, he said briskly. Six of you walk the plank tonight, but I have room for two cabin boys. Which of you is it to be? Don't irritate him unnecess unnecessarily, had been Wendy's instruction in the hold. So Toodles stepped forward politely. Toodles hated the idea of signing under such a man, but an instinct told him that it would be prudent to lay the responsibility on an absent person, and though a somewhat silly boy, he knew that mothers alone are always willing to be the buffer. All children know this about mothers, and despise them for it, but make constant use of it. So Toodles explained prudently, You see, sir, I don't think my mother would like me to be a pirate. 
Would your mother like you to be a pirate slightly? He winked at slightly, who said mournfully, I don't think so, as if he wished things had been otherwise. Would your mother like you to be a pirate twin? I don't think so, said the first twin, as clever as the others. Nibs would stow this gu- stow this gab, roared Hook, and the spokesmen were dragged back. You boy, he said addressing John, you look as if you had a little pluck in you. Didst never want to be a pirate, Miarty? Yo ho. Now John had sometimes experienced this hankering at maths, prep, and he was struck by Hook's picking him out. I once thought of calling myself Red-Handed Jack, he said diffidently. And a good name, too. We'll call you that here, bully, if you join. So he was just in math class, like, daydreaming about being Red-Handed Jack? Yeah. Yeah. I remember being in math class, dreaming about being Jack Sparrow. Huh. Huh. What do you think, Michael? Asked John. What would you call me if I joined, Michael demanded. Blackbeard Joe. Michael was naturally impressed. (laughs) What do you think, John? He wanted John to decide, and John wanted him to decide. Shall we still be respectful subjects? Shall we still be respectful subjects of the king? John inquired. Through Hook's teeth came the answer. You would have to swear down with the king. Perhaps John had not behaved very well so far, but he's shown out now. Then I refuse, he cried, banging the barrel in front of Hook. And I refuse, cried Michael. Rule Britannia, squeaked Curly. (laughs) The infuriated pirates buffeted them in the mouth. And Hook roared out, That seals your doom. Bring up their mother. Get the plank ready. They were only boys, and they went white as they saw Jukes and Seko preparing the fatal plank. But they tried to look brave when Wendy was brought up. No words of mine can tell you how Wendy despised those pirates. To the boys, there was at least some glamour in the pirate calling. I mean... You, I feel like you really can't tell me that there wasn't like one little kid that didn't want to be a pirate. Well, that didn't want to be a pirate, like a little bit at some point. I think every kid wants to. Hell yeah. Sounds fun. Freedom. Freedom. But all that she saw was that the ship had not been tidied for years. There was not a porthole on the grimy glass of which you might not have written with your finger, dirty pig. And she had already (laughs) written it on several. (laughs) Wow. She's like, look at this place. I am scandalized. (laughs) But as the boys gathered round her, she had no thought, of course, save for them. So my beauty, said Hook, as if he spoke in syrup. You are to see your children walk the plank. Fine gentleman though he was. The intensity of his communings had soiled his ruff, and suddenly he knew that she was gazing at it. With a hasty gesture, he tried to hide it, but he was too late. (laughs) So she saw his fucking, like, sweaty cuff. So his ruff is like... Or ruff. um, It's that, like, fluffy garment that's, like, here. So, yeah, it's, like, probably sweaty and, like, yellowing and dirty. And so she was like... Uh, and he's like <laughs> fucking embarrassed he's probably like <laughs> are they to die asked Wendy with a look of such frightful contempt that he nearly fainted they are he snarled silence all he called gloatingly for a mother's last words to her children wow at this moment Wendy was grand These are my last words, dear boys, she said firmly. I feel that I have a message to you from your real mothers, and it is this. We hope our sons will die like English gentlemen. Even the pirates were awed, and Tootles cried out hysterically. I am going to do what my mother hopes. What are you to do, Nibs? What my mother hopes. What are you to do, twin? 
What my mother hopes. John, what are you? But Hook had found his voice again. Tie her up, he shouted. It was Smee who tied her to the mast. See here, honey, he whispered. I'll save you if you promise to be my mother. <laughs> this is <laughs> weird. But they... not even for Smee would she make such a promise. I would almost rather have no children at all, she said disdainfully. Dude, they're like, we just want someone to read us bedtime stories, and that's going to be you. <laughs> <laughs> it is sad to know that not a boy was looking at her as Smee tied her to the mast. The eyes of all were on the plank. That last little walk they were all about to take. They were no longer able to hope that they would walk it manfully, for the capacity to think had gone from them. They could stare and shiver only. Hook smiled on them with his teeth closed and took a step toward Wendy. His intention was to turn her face so that she could see the boys walking the plank one by one. But he never reached her. He never heard the cry of anguish. He hoped to wring from her. He heard something else instead. It was a terrible tick, tick of the crocodile. Saved by the clock, baby. They all heard it. Pirates, boys, Wendy, and immediately every head was blown in one direction. Not to the water whence the sound proceeded, but toward Hook. All knew that what was about to happen concerned him alone, and that from being actors, they were suddenly become spectators. Very frightful was it to see the change that came over him. It was as if he had been clipped at every joint. He fell in a little heap. This is like the second time he's fallen down. Dramatically, you know. He's just here for a good time. You know what I mean? Life's too short to not be dramatic. The sound came steadily nearer, and in advance of it came the ghastly thought, the crocodile is about to board the ship. Even I guess, the <laughs> I guess this is like a magic land, but I'm like, how is that crocodile going to get on the ship? Even the iron claw hung inactive, as if knowing that it was no intrinsic part of what the attacking force wanted. Left so fearfully alone, any other man would have lain with his eyes shut where he fell, but the gigantic brain of Hook was still working, and under its guidance he crawled on the knees along the deck, as far from the sound as he could go. The pirates respectfully cleared a passage for him, and it was only when he brought up against the bulwarks that he spoke. Hide me! he cried hoarsely. <laughs> I know he's, like, literally facing death right now. Um, and for such a big, bad, scary pirate, like, what a baby. <laughs> yeah. It kind of seems like, though, when they're supposed to be pirates, they're, like, playing up the part of a pirate. Yeah. Like, a little bit extra. But they're all just a bunch of little baby men. They're but all just a bunch of grown-up lost boys. They gathered round him, all eyes averted from the thing that was coming aboard. They had no thought of fighting it. It was fate. Only when Hook was hidden from them did curiosity loosen the limbs of the boys so that they could rush to the ship's side to see the crocodile climbing it. Then they got the strangest surprise of the night of nights, for it was no crocodile that was coming to their aid. It was Peter. Dude, is he tick talking? You know what I mean? <laughs> Not like is he on TikTok, but like is he tick 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 tick? Do you think he's like making the sound with his mouth, or do you think he has like a little watch with him? I think he's making the sound with his mouth because he's he, going. T t t t t um, I mean, he was able to impersonate Hook That's so true. believably that the crew of Hook's ship thought it was him. <clears throat> That's true. He signed to them not to give he signed to them not to give vent to any cry of admiration that might rouse suspicion. Then he went on ticking. Wait, that's it? Damn, dude. This story's like really good at being like, what? The chapter's over already? Yeah, the writing style is like really good in the sense that like 
it definitely feels like it kind of just like flows you through what's happening to where you don't feel like it's dragging in any way. Mm -hmm. Um, And that you're not like, okay, like what's going to happen next, but it kind of keeps you like, like there's always like a beat it seems like, but then it really picks up right before the chapter ends to where you're like, fuck, I want to read the next chapter. Dude. I like that we kind of got Hook's backstory, but, like, in a way that wasn't, like, like, ooh, flashback. That it was, like, he struggles with the habitual desire of being, like, a proper gentleman and being, like, in good form all the time. And, like, that's how we learn of, like, where he came from, kind of. Yep. I like that a lot. Where did he come from? Uh, like a prep school or something like a, just like a boarding school, like a fancy school. But that like, we have like that information that he, like, he's not from Neverland. Like he's from like our world. I ascertained that as much as that, but I was wondering if there was any more allusion to more precisely who he was because i know that the book said like oh if you've been reading between the lines you know by now who he is and i'm like so then who the fuck is hook but i don't think that was i mean unless that was more of like an old-timey thing that if we were hip with the pop culture of 1904 we would know oh maybe um i guess like it is interesting to Mm -hmm. know that he went to a a not a reform school but like a like some kind of like a fancy school mortal says a boarding school like eton so he went to a boarding school yeah so i you could only assume that he his family was probably well off so he's probably from like a wealthy family and they were saying that he was like related to stewards and stuff so you could assume that he was from a well-off place, but he went bad. He went rogue. Yeah. Which I believe... Oh. There was a pirate, like a real pirate in history, who I think was, like, wealthy, and then he just, like, decided he was going to be a pirate. Oh, But really? he, he dressed really nice like that, too. Oh. Yeah, and he, like, was, like, a gentleman pirate, but he was, like, a bad guy. I can't remember his name for the life of me right now, though. Calico Jack? No, he was as famous for wearing calico. I don't think he was, like, faint. Like, I don't know. I don't think he... No, I'll have to look it up later and then... Captain Flint? Barbecue? Long John Silver. Wow, makes me want some seafood real bad. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I just thought that was really interesting that, like, he... He is different than everyone else, like, confirmed he is not of Neverland. Because the other pirates, it's like, where the fuck did they come from? They're probably, like, grown-up lost boys. I think so. And I think Smee is, like, the grown-up Tootles. Yeah, that's why everyone loves them. Well, people, they like Tootles. Yeah. They all like each other, so. I mean, that's why they don't get on Hook, get on with Hook the way that they do with Smee, because... The rest of the crew is probably just grown up lost boys, and he is a fucked up regular human adult. You know what I mean? Well, he's got baggage. Trying to formulate a response to what you said, but I got nothing. Okay. I don't know. I just thought that was a good chapter, and I'm really excited that Peter didn't come like flying in, that he like pretended to be the crocodile. Yeah. He didn't like fucking appear on the mast and start crowing, and then Hook's like, Or something like that. I was like a little more covert big brain. We still have time for that though. Once the ruse is up. Yeah, that's true. We still have we still have time for because I mean like if the ruse gets up that the crocodile ain't there, Hook is gonna be fucking pissed. Yeah, and also probably like mostly mad because he's embarrassed because he's such a baby. And it wasn't even really the crocodile. He just looked like a little bitch in front of his fucking... In front of everybody. A sweaty bitch. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. If you guys like the episode, grab your your hook claw and just 
hit that like button with it and then hit that subscribe button with it and then hit that bell notification with it so you're notified when the next episode goes live and uh don't forget to somehow without destroying (laughs) without destroying your keyboard or your phone type in patreon.com slash dead inside and head over there and check that out become a patreon join the discord talk with us we're lonely (laughs) mortals lonely i know he's the only one in the recording room (laughs) i feel like there was like a fair bit of people that went to specifically the tier for patreon Mm, where are you we miss you (laughs) where are you patreons why can't i find you and we'll see you in the next one It's like so high pitched it like wasn't picking up on Discord. Really? Yeah. That's funny.